Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus. Good to see you today. Isn't it supposed to be spring? I'm not yeah. cold yet. I had the fireplace on last night. It's like because I was cold. So yes. Actually, I could because my wife is always warm, but she's gone on a girls' weekend. So um, 
so I could crank it up. So that was good. Um, our order of worship is it's Good Shepherd Sunday, and we're, it's always a great Sunday. Uh, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. Um, so we're ready to go for that. Um, I got a couple of announcements. Um, next week is God Bless the Summer Sunday. And um, we're going to be having boats and golf carts and horses and antique cars. I don't know what we're all having out there. We're going to ask God to bless the summer. Everybody who's bringing stuff need to talk to the links. Please raise your hand. You need to go talk to them. They're going to have a yellow pad after church. Raise it again so everybody see it. And everybody stare at them, please. Everybody <laughs> stare at them. Everybody stare at them. So make sure you talk to them and write down. Because last week I said, you need to talk to me. And I don't know everybody yet. And you all got masks on. It says, so I have in my notes, this white-haired lady with a mask is bringing this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know I, don't know. I don't know everybody yet. So I was like, I'm, I'm, I was all panicking. So I got to redo this again. So the links are going to help me with this. And um, we're going to need people to, uh, we're going to need some um, people to bring some uh, sticks for uh, uh, making marshmallows and, uh, and maybe somebody to help us serve um, the hot dogs. We got, we got, I'm gonna, we're going to grill them before. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to grill them. I'm going to grill them the night before, I think. Get that all done. But um, we, have, we need that. So please talk to this so we can talk to the link so that I don't get embarrassed on Sunday. <laughs> and the nice thing about the service is going to be centered around, you know, people come to us. I mean, they come to us in the summertime. They come up here to play, to golf, to swim, to fish, to ride their side by sides, to ride their horses, whatever they do. And so we're going to have that opportunity. Lord, use us to make a difference in their life so that we can maybe let them know about Jesus as, as their Savior. Um, what else do I have to talk to you about today? There's coffee and cookies back there, and Paul brought them. So. The deal was that he said, I want you to bring cookies. He said, but don't you bake them. And he said, go to Costco and buy them. Then we'll have good cookies. See, I didn't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really gotten out of hand. Here. So, but that's okay. It's gotten out of hand. But we're going to take care of um, So there's coffee and cookies. If you guys want coffee and cookies, that's great. That's right in the back here. We can kind of socially distance and get do it as we see fit. But uh, trying to bring back a little normalcy here. That's all I got. Why don't we stand up? Let's turn to our neighbor. Let's give everybody a really good welcome and then we'll get going. We sing our opening hymn.
gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud had sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, by Jesus Christ the Lamb of God. I was so
beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is taken from Acts, the fourth chapter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came up upon them, came upon them, greatly annoyed it because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest with Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 1 John, the third chapter. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he com has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of John. And I'm going to be preaching on this text this morning. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand not and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am a good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. 
This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's sing the creed.
There's a lot of people who are going alone. Even, you know, those people say, I'm spiritual but not religious. Well, they just walk to their own drummer and they're not with the flock. They're not following the good shepherd a lot of times. And it's awful alone. Remember what the Bible tells us about the devil? The devil is like a roaring lion. Do you remember that? He's like a roaring. What is he going to do? Seeking whom he may devour. I mean, everybody freaks out when you have a cougar sighting around here because we're afraid we're going to get bit. <laughs> the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to take away what we have. He wants to take away our relationship with the one and only thing that can save us, our good shepherd Jesus Christ, who lived the life we should have lived and who died the death for sin that we deserve. We are sheep. Sheep go together as a flock. And we follow the good shepherd. He doesn't hurt us. We follow him. Don't go it alone. Flip the page. This is from the text. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, I want you to read with me what he said about people who pretend they're sheep or they're like they're the hired hands. Read it. He who is a hired hand, not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. <coughs> you wrote one more. I want you to answer this question today. Who or what is not helping you? in your relationship with the Good Shepherd. I'm asking you, and I know you're here today, but if you are like me, it's awful easy to compartmentalize your faith. What we do here on Sunday sometimes does not translate itself to my life and my choices that I make the rest of the week. Because we're... we're I'm not trying to make light of it. We're, we all go through that. We're sinners and we need to follow the good shepherd. Who or what is not helping you? What's distracting you from following the good shepherd? What are who? Who's taking your eyes off of Jesus? You know, I talked to a friend who was very disappointed because God did not help him the way he thought God should. And so he said, I'm not going to follow him, and I'm going to go my own way. Well, the only thing that's, that's done for him is he became he's become more embittered and more sad because he's out on his own, and he doesn't have a good shepherd. What is in maybe your lifestyle or your actions that's causing you to drift away from him? I mean, we can blame a lot of things on COVID and the things that that's going on in this world, but we need to get rid of that. In, in, in Jesus' day, he was talking about the hired hand. He was talking about the Pharisees and the chief priests and all those people that were trying to squash what Jesus was doing and have them go back their way. We have a lot of things in life that are doing that, don't we? I'm trying to figure out how to say this without... But you can't always trust leadership that will have your best interests in mind. And it's not, it, it doesn't matter on what side you're talking about, all right? There's a lot of money, a lot of politics flowing around, a lot of power flowing around, and they don't always have our best interests in mind when it comes to the things that are important to us, our relationship with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's all the farther politics I'm going to get because I, I don't think I need to go any farther. I'm not going to make any assumptions on what you should believe or not. I'm just saying, be careful of the hired hand who will leave you out to dry. The question we have to ask ourselves is, who or what is not helping us to, as we follow the good shepherd in the flock? And if we can identify those things, we need to get rid of those things. Flip the page. <coughs> Read this with me. This is a great line. You should memorize this line. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is really important. The good shepherd 
is not a good example for you. He did not die for as an example. That's what I mean by that. He did not die to be a good example to you. He died to save us. To save us from death. From damnation, because as certainly as there is a heaven, there is a hell. I believe that, because that's what the Bible teaches. And those who trust in Jesus Christ, their Savior, will have the promise of forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Those who go it on their own, who, have, who just want to live on their own, and who don't want to follow the Good Shepherd, they're going to have to answer for those things, their, those things in their life themselves. Because they don't have the Good Shepherd. We have the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who from the very beginning of time, the Father set a plan into motion to save us. He was going to crush the head of Satan, and he was going to wipe out sin, death, and the power of the devil forever. All throughout the Old Testament, we read about how the Savior would come. That's, if you read the Old Testament thinking about Jesus, it's going to change your life, people. Because all those things point to the one day when the Father would send His Son Jesus to be born, to live the life we should have lived, and to die the death or sin that we deserve. Our Savior Jesus Christ is our Good Shepherd. He leads us. He leads us to the paths of righteousness. He leads us to the forgiveness of sins. And He leads us in a way that we can live for Him. We're sheep. We don't always do the right thing. We make a lot of dumb mistakes. And yet we keep our eyes fixed on the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, who paid for all of our sins. Now, I want you to flip the page there, Brian. And I want to show you a video here. This is the story of my life. Okay. The life of the good shepherd. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Can you relate to that? Yes. I mean, how many times does Jesus pull us out of the stupid things, the sinful things that we've done wrong, and he forgives us and sets us free only for us to jump back in it again? And you know what? He'll never, ever stop doing that. There's never a sin in your life that's too bad for God to forgive. You understand that? That God loves you that much that He will forgive all of our sins. The Bible says He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves you that much. You need to think about that. Because I know that a lot of you are dealing with that right now. You're dealing with past hurts. You're dealing with things that you've, you've said or you've done or you've thought and that you're so ashamed about. And you, really, you come here, but you don't know if God will forgive you. I want you to know that he forgives you time and time <coughs> and time again. And it doesn't mean we just abuse God and his righteousness, but we are sinners. And we lay those sins at the feet of Jesus and we know again and again that we are forgiven. I want you to know that. That's why he's called the Good Shepherd because he will never quit pulling us out of the ditch. Last one. I'm going to summarize. Don't go to one. Look at that picture. Isn't that picture great? Have you ever seen that? The shepherd isn't, you know, we do, when I watched Bugs Bunny, okay, the shepherd always hit him in the butt with the, with the pole, you know, to get me moving on. But the way they do it here is that the shepherd leads them. And I think it's important for us as a congregation to look around here today and to say that we're in the good sense, we're sheep, and we're following the good shepherd. And we need to stay together. Don't go it alone, number one. Alone life is tough, and it's not going to get easier I have some notes here. I just want to look at this. No, I don't. Um, I just sat through a Zoom conference on Friday 
with the Alliance for Defending Freedom. And it's an organization that helps us, they're lawyers that help us uh, deal with First Amendment issues, the freedom of speech, freedom of religion. And the things that they're trying to push through the Equality Act right now is going to hinder who we can hire or, and how we can choose to act, live out our Christian life in a congregation. We're not real sure that it's going to go anywhere because we have one side. We have the, the judiciary that's still on our side here in terms of, and I think that will we'll follow the Constitution. But we can't go it alone. And things are only going to get tougher. I mean, they're going to tell you how, who you can hire and that genders don't matter and all these things, all these cultural things, it's coming and they're pushing it. The point of me telling you this is not to get political, but just to say we can't go it alone. We can't just kind of sit out there because what's going to happen? When we go it alone, what do we do? We shut up, we, we, we compromise ourselves. It's a lot easier to stick together as a flock and to find strength when we're together, right? Look at this. Look, just look around you here today. It's a whole lot easier living our, our Christian life when we know that we have 70, 80, 90 people supporting us, right? That's why we're here. So don't go it alone. It's only going to get worse. Number two, let Jesus rescue you and give you another chance. I'm going to say to you again, because I know that, that if you're like me, there's a lot of people living one life one way, and then, but, but secretly we have all these regrets. I want you to know that he will forgive you again and again and again. So if you have something in your life that's causing you damage, that's hurting your relationship with God, confess it to him. And know that in Christ you are forgiven. He's the good shepherd. He loves you. He wants to be a part of the flock. Last. Enjoy life in the flock. I'm going to say it to all of you who are watching on this being live stream or who may be nervous about going back. Get your shots and come back. Maybe I'll do this. this these people are waiting for you. Wave. Just wave, you guys. Right? Everybody's wave. Okay. They're, they're waiting for you. And, and not in judgment. We're all in this together. We all need the Good Shepherd. And it's so much easier going through this life when we're part of the flock, isn't it? And that's enough for today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, sing our offering hymn.
O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd. You laid down your life for us, the sheep. Please accept our gratitude, our thankfulness for all you have done, your sacrifice, and your powerful resurrection from the dead, which assures us that sin, death, and the power of the devil have been defeated once and for all. Lord, lead us, be with us. Keep our eyes always fixed on you. Lord, we lift up before you all those who need your help and strength, especially for John Rice, who's undergoing some eye issues, for Kaylee Grossen, who's continuing to recover from the cancer, for the Cassie Bird family, who were born as her dad, for Janine Hulkey's uh, brother and sister, and Lord, for Keith and Teresa Quislet, who are dealing with. COVID right now. And for David Lee, Sonia's dad, who is on non back surgery to recovery. Lord, all these people, we pray, that you would be with them, that you, according to your good and gracious will, that you would bring them healing and strength. Lord, we lift up before you our nation, those who are in power, especially our president, the vice president, Senate, Congress. And all those who are our leaders, Lord, use them. Change their hearts, Lord, so that they might follow you and seek to do your will. Lord, be with us as we go through these trying times. And use us to make a difference where we can around the people that we know and love, especially. All these things, Lord, we pray to you. Pray in the prayer you taught us. Our, our Father. Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. It's to remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Please rise. Let's sing. <coughs>
we'd like to share with what people with what's going on on our social media sites and things like that. Um, God bless the summer services next Sunday. It's going to be great. We talked about it. The ladies are back there. Raise your hand. Show everybody. You talk to them. We, if you're going to be supplying boats or RV or whatever, I need to know what's going to go on. And if you're going to do that, you need to be here probably around 8, as you can, as close to 8. Because if you get past 8.30, just everybody comes really early here. Have you noticed that? It's like, I, that's great, that's great. That's fun, but it's like, so we, gotta, we want to push them up on the grass over there. And uh, we're going to need some people to help serve, you know, hot dogs. We're going to need people to help with the, the s'mores and things like that. I don't know how big of a, how big of a demand it's going to be, but by golly, we're going to do it. Right? Because it's going to be fun, and it's a summer. And I'm tired of winter. I'm tired of spring. And let's go out. So we have coffee and really good cookies that Paul did not bake. So, <laughs> so uh, but he's not exactly telling the truth on the whole thing, but I'm going to let it go because it's a better story than what I got. Um, anything else? Wait, I have, there's somebody said I have to announce something else. Try, yeah, what was it? You announce it. <laughs> the trustees were looking for volunteers to help us with various things around the church uh, building and yard. We just, uh, there's a lot of little things that need to be done, and we just uh, can't find the time to do it all. And one thing next, uh, Wednesday, May 5th, we're going to have some students here from school, six to eight of them, can help us with outside uh, work to us. And we may need one or two people to help us. Uh, I don't know how many trustees are going to be able to be here for that day, but we may need one or two people to help us supervise the students. Thank you. All right. There's a sign-up sheet out on the table out there on the yellow legal pad. It's we the same legal pad that you put out, so you should add to Well, there's another legal pad out there. There's two of them. There's one. Yours is right up there. <laughs> I'm lying. All right. Sorry. All right. That's it. Gotta go with you this week.